Hey guys, I'm here today to talk to you about cold thermogenesis. So just hearing those two words, right? Uh, you either have two reactions. One is going to be, oh man, that's uncomfortable and painful, not fun. Um, and second one would be, that's exciting, right? So my goal today is to educate you on all the benefits so that everyone is excited to jump out there right now and be able to incorporate cold thermogenesis or cold therapy uh, with your clients, yourself, your friends, uh, and family. So first off, let's just kind of go into the basics of like what is cold thermogenesis, right? So the definition of cold thermogenesis is going to be the heat production that is stimulated through cold exposure. So when your body is exposed to temperatures, uh, again, at the ideal range of 50 to 55, um, as well as colder, your brain starts to kind of get this idea that it's in danger, um, something's not right, and that's when kind of it starts to release an arsenal of protective um, ammunition, I guess, for itself. And things like that, it basically will, you know, increase dopamine, norepinephrine, um, it basically sets off this like intense focus that you're going to feel. So when the body is exposed to that ideal temperature range of the 50 to 55 degrees, your brain kind of goes into a little bit of a panic of survival mode. And uh, again, it's rem to remember we are putting ourselves in a safe environment for this. So it is a healthy stress. Uh, but the brain is going to start releasing a bunch of like feel good chemicals, dopamine, norepinephrine, uh, throughout the body. It really just wants to relieve pain. It wants to enhance your mood. Uh, this response also is really good for your skin. So today I'm also going to go over the different types and the different options we have at all different levels uh, to expose people to uh, cold therapy. Um, we're going to start out with like ice face plunges uh, we'll start with we'll do cold showers we'll go into like actual cold bodies of water we'll do ice baths and um, also cryotherapy so um i to get the ideal temperatures you're just looking at about 50 to 55 degrees and uh, those are through research shows that it's the most beneficial when your body starts to actually send out the stressor signals um, that in the long run are healthy for your body. So why participate in such a crazy procedure, I guess, right? Um, and for me, the simple answer is because of the crazy benefits that you get from it. Um, I think this is for me my favorite practice because of the spectrum of people that it can benefit and the Accessibility of it would also uh, be something that is a positive advantage. So um, let's talk about brown fat. So brown fat, also known um, as BAT or brown adipose tissue, um, becomes activated at, again, around 50 to 57 degrees. But again, we're going to keep it at 50 to 55 degrees for optimal temperatures. And it's brown because of the dense amount of mitochondria. So brown fat is what we've used through evolution and still now to keep our bodies warm. It's mainly in our chest, our back area, and our kidneys as well. So cold thermogenesis is something that activates the brown fat. Brown fat also promotes weight loss. It's what basically heats up our inside. It raises metabolism by 350%. So um, that's pretty impressive to me. And uh, meaning once you do cold therapy at some point in the morning, throughout the day, again, um, your body, for the fact that it's heating itself, will uh, find the benefits of this. Exposing your body to small stressors, like cold, of course, is what like, we're talking about here. Uh, it helps your body 
adapt and improve um, its immune response to those stressors in the future. So doing cold therapy actually builds your immune system so you won't get cold. Uh, in other countries, they actually practice with their children, giving them like snow showers and putting them outside. Many people have seen those viral videos of babies in Russia um, being outside, and this is their reasoning for it. Um, so just keep that in mind. Some of the other benefits uh, that I have found uh, personally and through my clients for use, exposing them to cold therapy are gonna be things like, again, as I just mentioned, it improves the immune system. Um, it helps with pain relief. It helps with endorphin release, uh, accelerated recovery. So it is important to note, and I'm just gonna add something here, that if you're using cold therapy for recovery of the muscles, you wanna wait at least one hour before you actually expose yourself to it because you do want some of that healthy inflammation that you're gonna get um, from building the muscles after working out. So research has shown to wait at least one hour before exposing yourself to something like that um, after workout, if that is your goal right now, again, is for like faster recovery. So, um, Given that, as I just said, also, it helps reduce inflammation. It relieves stress. Um, it's our, basically our overall, our overall well-being. Um, it helps improve our heart rate variability two to three-fold. The first basic um, beginner step to introduce to you or your clients would be face plunges into an ice bowl. Um, again, this is great for people that are a little nervous about exposing their entire body to that dis initial discomfort. Um, this is going to be something that is quick. You still get all the most of the benefits are going to be found um, still with this. It's I do this sometimes in the morning. It's also great at night. Um, very similar to like a sleep induction method a lot of us might use is it's very painful the endorphins come up and then you kind of just release and relax and it makes you tired and it allows you for a great sleep um, that being said let's talk about the face plunges um, you know again if blasting your body is still an overwhelming concept dip your face into an ice bowl with your vagus nerve being right in there and it sends responses to the rest of your body. It'll help get the rest of your body used to the cold. The brain recognizes a legitimate threat and the sympathetic system kicks into action. Your heart rate will go up, digestion is stopped, the pupils dilate, and the use of a whole arsenal that will make you have razor sharp focus and almost feel superhuman. It's once again, it's just a great introductional step for any of your clients. So the second phase of introducing yourself or anyone to a cold therapy would be doing an ice shower. I've been doing these for about two years now and it's all I do. I wouldn't do a warm shower anymore. So again, that being said, um, a cold shower is just a great way to introduce yourself and become adapted to a cold exposure. Switch from warm to cold. At the end of your showers, turn the knob all the way to cold. Last as long as you can. Start with five seconds, then 10 seconds, and work your way up to make half of your shower cold. Your body will eventually start to crave this cold shower, and it becomes part of your routine. Um, just make sure to end it on cold. So you can kind of, again, you have more control over this. You can go warm, cold. If you want to shampoo and stuff your hair when warm, that's completely understandable. Um, so again, you have full control over uh, what you're experiencing and um, I'm confident that with some very fast adaptation to this, you're gonna be wanting and looking forward to this event. Cold water exposure um, can definitely have some limiting ability here because not everyone lives near a body of water as well as not everyone lives where the water would be cold. Um, every time we go out into nature, I always make sure um, you know, to go into Yosemite, uh, go into Lake Tahoe, as you're going to see in the video, um, where, you know, it's 52 degrees, it's invigorating. So, um, you know, the additional benefits of cold water exposure is going to be that when you're actually full body, 
it penetrates 30% deeper than environmental uh, cold temps would. It's going to boost your happiness by unleashing a floodgate of mood boosters such as dopamine and norepinephrine, as I mentioned before. Uh, this can be less accessible though, again, and that's why I want to reiterate that this is a great option, but it's also not always feasible for everyone um, to get the benefits of this. So if you have this, go for it. So the next level that we're going to discuss is ice baths. And I feel like this is probably the most intimidating for a lot of people because they've either at some point experienced it and it was obviously most likely very uncomfortable. So this is what you want to work up to is taking a full ice bath. Um, you know, you want to do that for five to 10 minutes, ideally. Uh, this excessive cold shock, it's going to be initially painful due to the vessel restriction uh, if underlying muscles aren't strengthened from prior exposure. So again, your body will adapt and it does become easier. Ice baths are pretty much the ultimate test of mental strength because your body wants nothing more than to get out of that environment, right? So just keep this in mind. 20 seconds in an ice bath, uh, let's just say 32 to 40 degrees, is equal to two minutes in a cryotherapy chamber. So within the first minute, you will feel your body start to tingle. Uh, and that's a good thing. It's basically, again, a whole concept of cold thermogenesis. So it's your body trying to warm itself. So finally, we come to my favorite um, form of cold therapy, and that is cryotherapy. Uh, again, this is gonna be limited on your ability based by location of where you're at and a location of a chamber. Um, a full chamber, in my opinion, is important because the head, neck, and chest all contain the majority of the body's thermal receptors. It takes 30 to 45 degree whole body drop to activate your central nervous system. When the central nervous system is activated, it causes endorphins, norepinephrine release, and better blood circulation, as mentioned earlier. Uh, it works great for adults with arthritis, uh, traumatic brain injuries, without having that painful response from an ice bath. Uh, and you can do it on a lunch break. You can go back to your normal life, and I think that's what makes this very user-friendly um, because it, you're not gonna experience that initial shock pain um, and numbness that you might get from an ice bath. So um, dropping your temperatures down this low are gonna release norepinephrine twofold. Uh, it stops the TNF-alpha, which is a main component to arthritis and inflammation. Uh, research has shown that 10 sessions increases glutathione reductase by twofold and glutathione uh, peroxidase by 68%. So these are the enzymes that are needed to use glutathione, uh, especially if you're taking liposomal glutathione. Um, releasing norepinephrine activates your metabolism to generate heat, uh, which is why you're going to have that shiver. Embrace the shiver. Um, it causes mitochondria and adipose tissue, which we mentioned earlier, but that's why the fat is brown. Um, and you will adapt, keep that in mind. One important thing um, to do, especially after a cryotherapy, um, as well as any, if you can do it during like a cold water exposure, is a cardio workout afterwards, just five minutes at most. Um, the cardio, basically from the cold therapy, you get the vasoconstriction. So everything goes, you want, it wants to bring all the blood to inside your, your, your trunk and everything is constricted. The cardio makes those basically rapidly expand and you get super oxygenated blood through all the little tips of your, you know, your limbs and fingers and everything. Um, this is great for recovery uh, as well as giving you a massive boost of energy. So now that we've talked about the benefits of cold therapy, I'd also just like to take a step back and look at any kind of dangers that could possibly arise. So it's important just to take a step back and be mindful of your limits. Know what your body is capable of. I strongly suggest that if you choose to do an extended period of time, 
in an ice bath or if you're choosing to go into some extreme cold waters in a lake or river that you always have a buddy with you. Hypothermia is a real danger if you're out in 32, 35 and just short of 40 degree water. Um, if you're out in that then um, there are real dangers so please keep that in mind. I'm really excited for you to take what you've learned today and execute that out again with yourself, with your friends, or with your clients. Uh, and thank you very much.